Hey, what's going on guys? Hope that one will be fine and welcome back to the part number three. So in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you that how we can create the, those forms that we had just created. If I just go to the registration form. So right now I am on my home page. So we have to create here a restriction plus we have to first look for the uh, registration form. Means that if I just register and try to log in, I can access my dashboard and without authentication, I won't able to access the home page. So we will do that later part. But here uh, in this video, I'm gonna explain that how we can create the registration as well as I just forget to bring here the submits button. I believe both in the register and the login, yeah. So we have to also create that button where we can actually have the validation. So we are gonna do that in this video. So let's jump in and get started into our Visual Studio code. So I have already opened up my VS code and make sure that you also have your VS code or whatever the text editor you are gonna use here, right? So let's go inside your source app and we have our component with the name of register and I first go inside my register.component.html file, right? So we have our name, email, password, and the confirm password. We already defined everything inside our model, all the fields that we are required. But there is one important thing, but make sure that if you have watched my very first part of this whole course, where I, ha where I have explained how we can create the API using Laravel. So if this is basically where we have created the Laravel authentication. We have used JWT for login and, all, and the API is created in the part number one. So make sure you have also uh, watched that video step by step and your server should be running, which I have already run my server by PHP Artisan Serve. So make sure that your Laravel project must have your server run, running on, right? So now let's go back here and uh, I'm gonna do here is to first create the register button. So let's create that and I created a button that should have a type of submit. All right, and we also want to give here a class for the BDN, BDN-primary. Uh, that means it should give you a blue color and the margin from the top to be bottom. So little bit we have some space from top and let's give it the name of the button should be register, all right? So it just saves it. And now if I go back and this looks like that, right? So you can change that, whatever the color that you want. But I believe, I think so BDN, BDN dash, um, it should be secondary or you can give it dark if you want and make that button to be small. So BDN dash SM for small, right? So this looks better. All right, so now we have to cover up the validation in this video for the registration form. So there are a few steps that you need to follow. So first thing you need to do is to go inside your register.component.ts file because we are working with the reactive form. So make sure you have a few things on. So we have to import here. I have to import something which is known as the form builder, which we are gonna use because we are working with the form. So I have to import my form builder as well as I need to have my form group, right? And I need to have my validator, right? So I'm gonna explain you things which are very important here. So form builders for the forms, form groups where we have to, uh, like we have our forms with multiple fields. And uh, form builder is basically the group of fields that we have, which is name, email, password, and confirm password. And validator, it means it can help us for the validation. Plus we have the advantage here that we can have, we have, we can use a function which is known as must match, which actually check your password and the confirm password, if both, uh, both the words uh, or characters match, then it will, uh, it's fine, then the function works well, right? So on the other case, if it's not matched, then it shows you the error, right? So these are the few things that you have to keep in mind. All right, so let's go inside my register.component.html file and actually it's giving me something here uh yeah so import i have to define here from where it's coming from so that should be from the angular forms right so from angular slash forms all right so that's fine for here and let's go inside your register.company.html file and I have to define here a directive which is known as ng submit, right? Which will, uh, which will let the function knows to submit something, right? So I give here some submit and the name of the function which should be submit and I'm gonna define here something which is known as form group which is a form, I explained to you. So we have to define here form group equal to and let's give it the name of form, right? 
and down underneath that we have first field which is name and I have to use something which is also known as form control name right so this make sure that it should be in camel case and uh, I just use that because with the help of form control name we are able to access the values so I'm going to use here form control name equal to name and uh, we have to use here something which is I, I knew directive right uh, which is known as ng class so ng class will work uh, just like to show us the validation errors and I'm using here a class which is known as uh, is dash invalid which is a bootstrap class which shows that which indicates that if it's something which is invalid means that something which is not appropriate according to the condition so this is going to show us the message in in the red alert form right so or we are going to use here invalid dash feedback which you're going to see right now let's define here inside that so i'm going to define uh, ng class here equal to and uh, just under uh, underneath that under these double quotes sorry so this there i need to define here is dash invalid now is dash invalid will check if something is wrong so if it's invalid and uh, we have to and we have to check the submitted condition as well as and uh, means that it should be submitted and it must show some errors so f dot name dot errors right so this is for that now I, and just underneath our uh, in just inside your form dash group div I need to create here a condition with the directive which is known as ng if which works very much similar to if else conditions despite we are using only if here so if that is submitted and uh, we have to check very much similar that i did on top that if the f now this question arise in your mind that where this f is coming from so i'm going to show you just in a little while so just right here f dot name dot errors all right so if that is something which went if it's submitted and it has some errors so let's give it here a class of invalid dash feedback which is again a bootstrap class and in just under that div I'm gonna create here another condition ng if now here I'm gonna show the message now if that errors f dot name dot errors dot require now it there it, it's the message for the required field so I'm gonna show here name is required all right so this is this field is all for the name is required right so now down underneath that i have to do a very much similar stuff so just grab it from here for the email and just put underneath that and input type of text name equal to email and i need to define here the form control name first so let's define that so form control name equal to email all right and i need to just grab this ng class from top so just copy that up and change some few attributes inside that so i should place that right after the placeholder so if that class is invalid so despite of having the name i need to define here email right so f dot uh, email dot errors right and um, just change that to email now here I have I need two conditions here so I need that the email is required plus I need to define here that email must be a valid email address right so the first is for the email so let's change that text to email is required as well as f dot email dot errors dot required and I need to copy that same div and paste it down here and I need to show here another message that email must be a valid email address all right so i just play um, paste it right here at, uh, i just give the text and there are a few changes that i need here so f dot email dot errors dot email right so this should will check this uh, the error for the email is valid right so that's it for the as far as email is concerned and now let's look for the password so there's also a very few little changes here so i'm going to grab it from the uh, name so just place it underneath that and uh, i need to change that to first 
password is required and if that is submitted and it has some errors for the password so f dot password dot errors all right so this should be for the invalid feedback now just in the inside this ngif that if f dot password dot errors dot required and uh, this should show you the message for the password is required but i also need to show that password must be at least six characters i also have to apply another condition so you see for that case i need to use here f dot password dot errors dot min length now min length will check the minimum length for the password so so i need to change that to password must be at least uh, six characters so this should be must be at least right so it should be together right so password must be at least six characters and uh, that's it i believe and i need to change yeah i already changed that to min length right so last thing that we have is the confirm password so i'm going to grab this all same divs from top and uh, actually not that just copy these two divs and just go right under the form dash group div and place it down here so here i need to change a few things that i need i forget to bring here the form control name actually so let's define the form control name right here so form control name equals to password right so next up for the confirm password i need to go here and change that to form control name so i need to give it here the name of confirm password all right so confirm password and uh, just simply grab this and uh, place it here inside f dot and as well as here so here i'm going to show that the confirm password is required and plus we have to show for the for the min length which is already here and it it must also match no now for matching the results i need to give it here must match all right so i just need to change that text to password must match all right so for that condition we have to do a little bit a uh, little bit more work but i believe this is that's it for now okay so we created here the form group and let's go inside our uh, form group uh, the component.ts file so we define here the form builder and next we have to also work for the uh, must match but we will do that later on so right under inside my uh, export class i need to or i should go underneath that uh, ng on in it just above that i have to create here a create form and this should be the function that i'm going to create here so let's define here the form first so the form group that we have defined here right inside here so i need to define here the form group so this form which i have i'm going to define here this should be the form group so let's define here form group all right and this form group is coming from the angular slash forms and uh, inside this function so i need to access the form object so this dot form equal to this dot form now we are going to use here something which is not a form builder so let's define here form builder actually uh yeah so this form builder is i need to define that inside my um i actually define here now i need to define inside my constructor so form builder and let's define here form builder all right so this dot form is equal to this dot form builder dot group because we have multiple fields so i have to define here form builder dot group and uh, actually i just write wrong here so it should be this dot form builder yeah sorry about the spellings i believe i have installed the extension which actually checks yeah it's fine the form builder does not exist and uh, just define here right this dot 
form equal to this dot form builder dot group and yeah I, I believe I need to define your name so let's define here name and we have to give it the null because I don't want to give any value here so let's validate it so validators dot required all right so this should be for the name I need to define exact for the email as well so email I believe there's something which is wrong so this dot form equal to this dot form builder dot group and actually it don't have square brackets sorry about that it should be parentheses all right so this should be um, all right so this should be fine yeah I forget to bring here the private actually so that should be private right so really sorry for that so now in the for the email case I need to define that you can also give it like um, make that empty like that or you can bring the null here just like I did on top of the name it's all up to you so let's define here the validators so validators for the email so I need to give it the required field plus I also need to validate according to the email so let's define a validators dot email all right so this should be for that and now let's look for the password and I need to give it again no value for that and we have to apply the validation so validators dot required and I also need to check for my uh, for the minimum length so let's define a min length and min length should be six right so this is for the password we have to see for the confirm password so confirm password all right so and next here give it the empty and we have to check here the required as well so validators dot required all right so that's fine for all the fields now as I explained that uh, this F should be coming from somewhere right so I need to uh, uh, create here a getter for easy access to form fields so just go underneath the ng on in it and define here a function get F and this should return all the form right so return this dot form dot controls all right so we define the form fields here and I need to call this ng on init function once it's called so this dot create form this will call the function and we have to define here the function that we created once we submit that so just write actually just close that for now all right so just underneath that we have to define here a function submit and here I have to check some of the conditions so if that if the submitted is true if this dot submitted equal to true which I have to define on top uh, the submitted here so let's by default the submitted should be false so I need to give it the uh, submitted should be false or yeah it should be false by default and here if that submitted is true so just make that to not the colon actually I need to give here submitted equal to false right now right underneath that we have to give here if that's so if it's submitted and we have to check here a condition that if this dot form is invalid means that if it's invalid if someone clicks on the submit and if it's invalid it should stop here so we have to use here something which means that it's returned so later on when we are going to save that inside our database when we create our services so this gonna uh, check every condition is valid and then it will go through and saves our form and that's the uh, basic uh, requirement that we so let's go back and it's showing us the error it says that can't bind to form groups it's it, it's a known property of form okay so what I'm gonna do first I need to go inside my app.module.ts file and that's where I'm gonna define here the form module so let's first define here let's import the forms module here so import 
and we need to add here forms module and we also need to import here the reactive forms module so let's add the reactive r should be capital so reactive forms forms module which should be coming from the angular slash forms all right so we need to import that inside our imports so first i have to add my forms module plus i need to add my reactive forms so let's add that right here right at the bottom of it so if i go back to the browser and you see now the error is removed okay so here you see the message which I, I can see here the confirm password and the confirm password is required which is basically the validation for this despite um, also the password validation not is showing uh, for the password so let's first go and fix these things inside our register.company.html file right so the few things which I believe is missing here is the first we have our we forget to bring the the ng class directive for uh, for the submitted so i need to define that inside my right after the placeholder of the password so this should be the password so just add the uh, password now if i go back and try to click on the register and you see the password is required now let's look for the confirm password case all right so in case of the confirm password yeah i i define that confirm password is required which is fine and also the password must must match which is also fine but actually i i, I forget to bring here uh the the ng if submitted so i need to copy that up and let's add right after the the input field so just just copy that and also bring this closing tab and it should end right after here right okay so that's fine and i need to change that to we also need to grab the ng class directive let's add that in right after the confirm password and we need to change that to copy that and change the password to confirm password and i also need to change those errors so if it's submitted and i need to make this change for the confirm password and which is fine we give it the class of invalid dash feedback so this should be confirm password and i hope things looks fine now if i go back and uh, click on the register you see the now the errors are showing now we have to fix few things so if i just go to the john we uh, we add the name which is works fine now if i add the email at the rate gmail.com if i just try to um let's say if i just try to right something like that it shows that uh, the email must be a valid email uh, email address right so we add the valid email address we give it the password is showing us the errors that six characters but in case of the uh as long as i if i just remove it it shows us the message that password should be required but it's one comparing those both passwords now for that we have to create a custom function so I need to create that function inside my app and I, I want to give it the name of confirm so let's go inside your app and click on the right click and create a file uh, so confirmed dot validator dot ts file so that's the class where, where I need to add the confirm validation so let's first import the form group so import form group which is coming from the angular slash forms right so angular slash forms and i need to export here a function and the name of the function should be must match and that must include two parameters the first for the password so i just give it the control name and that should be of type string and the next one should be matching i gave it the name of matching uh, control name which should be again of type string right uh, so just to find that string here so inside here i need to create i need to return the form group so let's return the form group and that should be equal to the form group and we have to define a function that contains two variables the first one is the control which will check the password so let's add here form group 
dot control and that should have the control name and the second one will have the matching control so let's create another variable and set that to be matching uh, matching control uh, equal to form group dot controls and that should have the uh, matching control name right so this will basically have the password and other variable will have the confirm password and we have to check if that matches now if the matching control dot errors and we'll check if it's not matching uh, so it should be matching control not matching so dot errors dot must match and it should be make sure it should be in small that m should be in smaller case right so it must match and so this actually condition is showing that if the matching control must have some errors as well as it doesn't match now it must shows us some error and it will stop us from the execution so that will return and on the other hand we also have to check if the control dot values should not e is not equal to the matching control dot value so that should have the matching control uh, we have to show the error so for that we have to set the error so let's define the set error and make sure it should must match so let's define here must match that again that m should be small so basically this must match is coming from the uh, this this validator that we apply for the password must match right so must match and we have to bring this true all right and on the other hand if it's matched means that things works fine so match control matching control dot set the errors and set the errors to be now simple means that if everything works fine so we don't need to do any any kind of this stuff so let's go inside your register dot component dot ts file we need to import here something which is known as the must match function that we just created so import must match actually it should be must match which is basically outside of this directory so dot dot slash and we have our confirm dot validator right so we define here the confirm password which is required so let's after right right after that we have to define that function that we just created so make sure it should be validator so validator must match which is a function where which we have just imported so miss must match the password and the confirm password so it should be confirm password all right so just make sure these posts should be same now if i go back and refresh this it's fine click on the register everything looks fine go to the console fine let's add here test and test at the rate gmail.com let's add the password should contain six characters and that should uh the password must match it's still fine and it only show you the message if the password not matches now if i just try to type five and try to register one works right so that's it guys i hope you guys learn something out of it you learn the very basic validation very important validation i would say that every every single field have its own validation you see the name is different it also check the email validation the password matching and the confirm password so right so i hope you guys love this this uh, video so in the next video we are going to show and we are going to save this data inside our mysql database and uh, we also have to apply some kind of beautiful notification that that can show yes something is a uh, message or a toaster which can show the, the the data is registered successful right so that's it for this video so don't forget to like and subscribe and i want to see you in the next part